Welcome, this is the 10 Radio TCAP practice test for Integrated Math 1. We're on question number 8, and this is subpart 1, so no calculator. You'll notice that I came up with two triangles, and it's because my handwriting is horrible, so um, trying to draw is even worse. I'm going to mark one of these up ahead of time as RST, because they tell me to, but I'm not going to mark this one yet because it'll make it easier if I can organize everything in a nice way uh, later. So the question says for triangle RST and triangle UVW, sides RS, RT, and ST are congruent to sides VW, VU, and W respectively. So what I'll do is mark RS as one um, with one little mark to indicate it's a specific link. I don't, I don't need to know exactly what it is in this question. It tells me my corresponding side would be VW. So what I might do is this and try VW right there. And then RT would be down here and it should be VU. So if I do that. And then the last one, ST, I'll mark with three and WU. Now these kind of look a little equilateral or maybe at least isosceles. It doesn't really matter that visual doesn't always play out and you are welcome by the way to just mark this one as UVW and just put the marks in different places. For me it makes sense to be able to visualize congruent parts in the same area but you probably don't need that. That's just my own weaknesses that I'm dealing with but maybe you do and I've shown you ways to think about it. But it's very important, I mean it didn't take very long for me to write those triangles down and mark them up. It gives me a much better place to go from than just doing it internally in my head. Plus, I mean, if I make video telling you I think about stuff in my head and it's screenshot, that doesn't really make any sense. So, hence the reason the drawing was there. So, which word, phrase, or label best completes each statement? This proves that there could or could not be a set of rigid motions that pre-image RST and image UVW. And maybe when you hear that you're thinking like, say what now? So when they say that there's a rigid motion, it means the type of translation that would lead to congruence. They'd be in the same, uh, all the parts would match up in the way that they're supposed to. I realize I accidentally was trying to go over here and change colors and ended up marking that out. Anyway, sorry. Uh, so what we're looking for is to see if we can prove congruence. Now in order to prove that they're congruent, they'd have to have the same sides, uh, they'd have to have corresponding sides being equal and corresponding angles being equal. Now it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be, but UVW, triangle UVW can be written as triangle VWU which serves our, these two things are the same, it's not like an angle where that middle letter indicates where the vertex is, so if I'm talking about angle VWU versus angle VUW, that's not the same thing, but the triangles could be the same. With that said, what's up with the angles? What can I say about them? The thing about a triangle is because of the whole 180 degrees being the sum of all internal angles thing and there's three sides, your side lengths are kind of locked in by, or, or affected I should say, by the angle that you use. If I were to take this angle and say I have this distance, and I increase the angle to up here, to go just as far, I'd have to increase the side length. Conversely, if I lock in specific sides, the angles lock in too. So if I tell you that this is a certain length, and this is a 30 degree angle, and this is a 60 degree angle, and this is a certain length, and this is a certain length as well, if I have another triangle down here that I tell you well, all these sides are the same, the simple fact that, all the, or short, I should say all the corresponding sides are the same, by virtue of the fact that you are locked into the 180 degrees and the fact that the angles determine the side lengths and the side lengths then determine the angles, you could assume that the angles are the same length as well. If you want, just like take three rulers and increase the angle and you can see that it'll increase the side length, but if you lock those side lengths into a specific amount, you can't really change the angles in its triangle, otherwise you end up with something like this. See how it's different angle but they're not connected so it's not actually a triangle anymore. Anyway, so the question says that the uh, that this set up the way that it's set up about what we've been told either must be a set of rigid motions which is say they are congruent um, between those two could or could not or cannot well if we know that the angles are the, the corresponding sides are congruent and that there are corresponding angles that are congruent 
even if the triangle is written in weird ways, then there must be congruence between the two statements, uh, between the two sets, which would mean that there is an image that I could slide this down in a translation form, or spin it around into a rotation form, or perhaps reflect it over multiple points and end up shadowing this or covering it, and we're good to go. So yes, there is that all the criteria is met for rigid motion because we're congruent. The other part says this also proves that angle RST is congruent to angle what? Now me writing them this way uh, in terms of not setting the specific angles up beforehand and sort of drawing this one based on what the corresponding sides were make this question very easy to answer. RST is here, VWU is here, so right there. So the answer to number 8 is B and the answer to number uh, a part one is B and a part two is B as well.